Hi and welcome to the first video for the assembly modeling playlist. Uh, in this question we're going to create the assembly that you can see here. Uh, it's just a combination of long pins, short pins and chain links. Uh, so the assembly questions in the, sam uh, in the associate exam should be more straightforward than the part modeling exercises. At least that's how I find them. Uh, but in saying that, they're also weighted quite heavily. So if you can get the assembly modeling questions down pat, then you should have really no problem in uh, getting the minimum score required to pass the pass the test. All right, so let's get started. Let's go to SolidWorks and create a new assembly. Once you're in your new assembly, browse and try and find the folder uh, where all your chain links, or where your assembly parts are. Uh, this should be in the sample exam that you've downloaded uh, from the SOLIDWORKS website. And let's just have a look at the, let's just have a look at the assembly. It seems that the starting, well, always try and start the assembly at the origin. That makes sense. Uh, so as we can see here, the origin is at the center of the top of one of the long pins. So this is what we'll try and try and set up uh, correctly now. Also, be careful of uh, the origin and the axis uh, because these directions will affect your final answer. I believe in this question they ask us to find the center of mass. Yeah, the center of mass of the assembly. So yeah, it really does these directions really do affect your final answer. So for good practice, spend some time early and try and set it up correctly. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll start with a long pin. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And now I have a long pin just floating around. Uh, if you don't want to place it anywhere, you can just click the tick and that'll set it straight to the origin. Um, I'll turn, turn my origin origin on so we go up view uh, view the origins yeah so if I just go up it's defaults to where I want to go anyway uh, so we'll just take the default which is perfect actually looking at this uh, axis down in the bottom left corner you can see that up is Y and then X and Z are our uh, directions are the directions so looking at our our image that's exactly how we want it so in this case it was quite simple in uh, orientating the assembly uh, to suit how the question asks you to uh, just be aware that it might not always be this easy in the practice exam uh, so just if you ever need to know if you ever need to um, orientate it better you can always right click on your first thing and float it then once it's floating, it moves around anywhere. And then you can create constraints by using the mates. So mate, the top and I think it'll be the top plane. Yep, make them coincidence, great. That's our first one. And then also maybe our two origins. And then tick. And now as you can see down here, uh, the assembly is now fully defined. So that's that's all we needed to do anyway really wasn't quite as difficult uh, as it might have seemed. Okay, we can now start adding uh, additional components to our assembly. So come up and we'll insert some more components. I think next was the chain link. Chain link, open. And we can place it anywhere. Once we have our chain link, you can move it around. Uh, if you right click, you can reorientate it. Uh, and a little left clicking changes the position, as you might know. And then we can just go ahead and start mating our assemblies. So, to do so, I will left click this top face and hold shift and uh, click the top of the long pin. Select mate. Uh, and that, actually maybe a better way to do it 
would be to make the outside circles coincident. Yeah, that's a much better way to do it. Okay, so that's fixed, but now it should still be able to rotate. Alright, that's great. Return to our picture. Now we have a short pin and a chain link. I might just add all the chain links and the long pin and then finish up with the short pins. Uh, doesn't really matter. Maybe if you're thinking about how you'd make this in real life, you'd have to go the chain link and the short pin and the chain link with the short pin, but in SOLIDWORKS it doesn't really matter, so I might cheat a little bit here. If you want to add a new a new component, instead of having to go to insert components every time, you can right click on the long pin, oh, sorry, hold control, yeah, yeah, hold control, just control Z that, hold control on the chain link and click and drag it out and you'll have a new one, which is pretty, pretty cool I think, uh, and then I will go ahead and mate these ones again. And then it's taking me in the wrong direction for now, so I will change the alignment. Yep. Ah, I know there's also an angle in there, but I'll just I'll just get all of them in for now. So again, I'm holding down Control, I'm left clicking on the chain link, and then I'm dragging it out. Really speedy. Uh, I'll just touch base here. Oh, there's two more. So again, exactly what we've been doing. Flip the alignment again. Yeah. Push that out a little bit. And then one more time. Hopefully you can see why I think this is a bit easier than the part modeling exercises. Again, you're really just repeating the same skills a number of times. <clears throat> okay. And now I'll add in my long pin. How good is this? Absolutely flying. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, but... Uh, I don't really think you'll have to watch every second of this because I am just repeating the same <laughs> the same steps. I'll add in my short pins, so to do so I haven't got one here, so I'll have to find it from my folder. Short pin, open, doesn't like me but it's okay, and I'll just place it anywhere. Again, exactly what we've been doing, this is kind of getting a little silly. And I just flip that. I'll check that it goes all the way through. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll just do a couple more, throw them out there just to change it up a little bit so you're not falling asleep. And I will continue just adding them in now. Yep, yeah, one and two. So it looks like our assembly is now nearly complete. All we have to do is add in these new angles. So angles A, B, and C. Okay. And we give us, just like in the part modeling exercises, they give us uh, some values for that. You can probably tell that in the following question, uh, they might ask you to change these, these values, uh, but we'll address that in the following video. All that's missing now is uh, to add in these angle dimensions A, B and C. Uh, I'll just check what these are. I think it's 25, 25, 125 and 130. So we'll just add these dimensions in now and then we should be able to find the center of mass of the assembly. So I'll return to SOLIDWORKS. Here's my assembly and I will add in these, di these angle dimensions. Uh, so to do so you can select any parallel line uh, because it'll create the angle, the same angle between it. I'll select these two, 
and my angle is 25 degrees. Uh, see how I didn't like it? I'm going to stay calm and I'm going to fl flip these dimensions a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and that give that's these combination has given me the right uh, angle that I was expecting. So because there's a, di a number of different ways to look at the, the angle between two lines, uh, you might need to use this alignment and the flip dimension uh, options to make sure you get it the way that you want it to. Okay. Uh, the next one is between this straight line and this straight line. Uh, I'll change the alignment. It should be 125 degrees. It's going to freak out again. The sum not as bad. Uh, I'll see, I'll just play with it a little bit. Okay, that's working out fine. And then the final one is between any of these two lines. Let's choose this one for the sake of it. I uh, did not like something, but if I choose the angle, it should be right. Yep, 130 degrees. Okay, and now this time it stays calm, so that's great. looks like I've done everything now. Oh, no. Okay, so it's still rotating around the origin. Uh, that's interesting. So we all need to uh, fix that before we find the center of mass because right now uh, these lines are not exactly parallel with the x-axis. Uh, this is an easy fix and I'll show you how I'll do it. There'll be a number of different ways you can do it. Uh, we can create a mate between the right plane, this plane, and one of these uh, perpendicular lines. So it doesn't like it, but that's because it defaults to coincident. Uh, but if I go perpendicular, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. So now if I have another play again, if I click and try and drag it in different directions, uh, this time it's not moving. So that's that's what I want. Uh, I'll go up and check the center of mass now. So it's under, sorry, tools, and then mass properties. And my center of mass is 348.66 millimeters in the x direction, negative 88.48 millimeters in the y direction, and negative 91.40 millimeters in the z direction. In uh, respect to this axis down in the bottom left here. So I'll return to the uh, assembly, other uh, document, and see if it's there. And as you can see, um, excuse me, the center of mass is perfectly for uh, answer A. So that's our answer for this question. I'll just double check that I'm right. Yep, seven is A. That's great. As you can see. Uh, even with the assembly questions, you can get the answer to two decimal places, so that should be your goal on the exam, uh, just for some peace of mind so that you do have the right answer. Uh, probably the biggest uh, point to emphasize in this video is the importance of setting up your assembly in respect to an specified origin. Uh, this will be the case for all questions that ask you to find the center of mass of an assembly, uh, or even a part. So just really take the time and put the yeah put the time in and the work in early so that you can go ahead and create the assembly afterwards. Uh, in the next video, we will look at just a simple. It'll be a quick short video showing you how to change the dimensions in an assembly, similar to what was done in the part modeling exercises.